Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. With NVIDIA's recent RTX 40 announcements and subsequent launch later this month, I think all eyes on AMD. How can they counter Lovelace? Pricing information, performance targets, and of course, architecture on everyone's mind. Now, with any luck, we'll know all of this stuff early November, which is when AMD hosts their conference. But this brings us to the subject of today's video, where there is some very interesting RDNA free information. We're also going to tackle some other questions concerning AMD's next generation GPUs, Zen 5, and even some RTX 40 benchmarks that have popped up. And of course, we're going to get right into it after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So let's start things out with PCIDs and Nave Free X. So I'm sure most of you know this at this stage, but RDNA 3 is broken down essentially to Navi 31, 32, and Navi 33. Navi 33 will be the lower end SKUs, and Navi 31 will be the highest end. Navi 33 is going to be a monolithic die, and then Navi 32 and 31 will be based upon chiplets. We've gone into this extensively several times in the past, and I actually have quite a lot of RDNA 3 and even some preliminary RDNA 4 info that I'm going to tackle in another video. At the moment, I'm trying to do a little bit of due diligence on it. But it, what is really interesting is Rogame has actually uncovered some PCIDs for RDNA 3. So you can see the range on screen yourself in a tweet. So Navi 31 begins with 0x7440 and ends in, in sorry, 0x745F. Navi 33, though, has also several IDs which are associated with it. I'm not going to read out all of those, but you can see them, of course, on screen. Now, there are essentially around six IDs, therefore, that are currently associated with Navi 33. Now, there are a couple of caveats here that I really want to stress with these IDs. The first is this does not mean that there are going to be several gaming cards which release. The real thing is that some of these could be engineering samples. In fact, I actually got told by one of my sources that almost certainly at least a few of these are. Not to mention the fact that there are going to be pro variants as well. And don't forget that there are going to be desktop inc um variants as well as um, mobile variants. So I certainly wouldn't say that this is an exhaustive number of SKUs which will actually end up being released. And there are of course a lot of questions of what about the performance targets of these GPUs? Well, as I mentioned just a moment ago, Navi 33 is going to be the lower end ones and they're gonna basically be equivalent, at least according to what I've been hearing and many others, of high end Navi 21 SKUs. To put this into a different way, Navi 33 is going to be roughly on par with NVIDIA's RTX 4060-50, 32 is going to be 4080-4070 to 4070 class, and then, well, I'm sure you guys can guess what Navi 31 does. It's going to be like 1490-ish levels. Now, that isn't to say that it's going to outperform or be equal to those parts. It's just meant to compete. And there are, of course, a lot of questions that we still don't know. For example, what the pricing is going to be on these GPUs. And also things like ray tracing performance. What about the features? NVIDIA have been more than doubling down at the moment on ray tracing. Intel seem to be doing the same thing for its Arc GPUs, although obviously there's still a lot of questions questions how all of this is going to come to pass right like we don't know what the pricing for example of nvidia's lower end uh, rtx 40 series cards are because at the moment the inventory is just flooded with rtx 30 series this is another reason of course that amd have delayed navi 33 it's going to be very interesting to see how the gpu market settles particularly given arc the a770 is like you know low 300 us dollar mark now at the end of the day performance with these 
with those GPUs seems to be all over the place and it's going to be kind of difficult to know how all of this is going to unfold in the next three, six, 12 months. I think ARC GPU drivers are going to get better and better and better. Um, I actually saw, I don't remember who, who mentioned this initially, but there was someone on Twitter where they were actually doing some comparisons of drivers for the uh, lower end ones. And there was actually been quite a lot of performance uplift with the newer driver revisions. But of course, how much of that is going to matter, especially when AMD then releases Navi 33, for example, and uh, Intel, uh, sorry, and uh, NVIDIA launched their RTX 40 lower end parts. <sighs> My feeling is that Navi 33 in particular is going to be a very small die, and in theory, because it's monolithic, it should be relatively cheap to produce, although it is limited to 8 gigabytes of memory. But honestly, I think it's going to sell really well. I think AMD are going to sell those things. Well, I suppose it depends on the on the on the performance levels as well. But I think they're going to be really popular. And I've also been hearing a lot of rumors that uh, AMD have drummed up a lot of interest for its Navi 33 variants for mobile implementation. It does definitely seem to be a mobile first part, which isn't necessarily bad. It should mean that it clocks very well, especially for desktop. So it's going to be a very interesting one. Speaking of interesting ones, HW Info has already got early support for Zen 5. There's also some updates for other processors. We'll get into that in just a second. I just want to give courtesy credit to Harakazi5719 on Twitter. That's how I initially spotted this. So yeah, early support for Zen 5. I find this kind of amusing because ultimately, you know, Ryzen 7000, Zen 4, whatever you want to say, has just launched. Now it does say that this is for Zen 5 family, so it doesn't specify what Zen 5 processors they are. I also just want to spend a moment just to mention that it's also enhancing the support for Meteor Lake and Granite Rapids as well. Now, what this ultimately means for you and I is very little, but it does show, of course, that Zen 5's, you know, kind of coming along quite well in the bring up, and I have been hearing that. Zen 4 is basically Zen 3, but just better. And that's not me trying to be an asshole, it's just true. Like, it basically just takes the Zen 3 architecture and it's like, hey, you know what would be an improvement here would be to do this, and here would be to do that. It basically, I don't want to say it's a refresh because that's very. I think that has negative connotations and it's not really accurate, but it basically has major, you know, advancements of the Zen 3 architecture, but I wouldn't say it's an entirely new architecture, whereas, well, Zen 5 is, I wouldn't say a completely ground up design, but it certainly has a lot of the hallmarks of it. And some variants too will launch with the, you know, low power chips for like mobile implementation. It's going to be very interesting to see how uh, Zen 5 actually competes with with uh, Intel, like at the end of the day, Intel are doing okay at the moment. I think Older Lake has done pretty well. Um, I, I'm not going to say anything regarding the 13th generation to uh, versus Ryzen 7000. I don't think we know enough yet. I think there have been some interesting benchmarks and stuff, but honestly, a lot of the leaks, like, yeah, I, I, I'll wait until the final things actually release. But ultimately, I think Intel are doing fairly well. My prediction is it's going to be very competitive, probably a lot more power hungry. Let's just be honest. The real question for me is later, like what happens when AMD launches the X3D variants of Zen 4, which looks like they're going to launch like very early uh, next year. Um, and of course, we also have Zen 5 and how that competes against all of Intel stuff. God knows at this stage. Um, and yeah, final thing, and this concerns the RTX 4090. So the RTX 4090, as many of you know, is the current flagship, although the, um, you know, a, 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 a NVIDIA could go higher, technically speaking, with the uh, specifications for the RTX 40 series, but the RTX 4090 is going to launch October the 12th. And there has actually been a couple of interesting results that have started to leak online. One of those is actually a CUDA benchmark. Now, I want to give credit to um, uh, freedcenter.org, and I'm using uh, Google Translate right now to kind of read this out. They got this information initially from uh, WCCF Tech, but I'm looking at the uh, freedcenter.org. It's uh, in German, but again, I'm using translation because my German, I'm learning actually German at the moment, but it's nowhere near good enough to read anything this complicated. But um, long story short, compared to the 3090 Ti, the 4090 is about 63% faster. Now, if we compare that to previous um, uh, previous leaps, the 2080 Ti FE went 
um, up 32.8%. Let's just call it 33% against the 3090. Also, a Twitter user, Sebastian, also mentions that this is quite close to the gaming benchmarks for the various GPUs, at least for the previous generation of cards. So I would stress that uh, yeah, I might want to take that with a pinch of salt, but it's probable, therefore, at least if we see true to form here, that the 4090 should be roughly 60-ish percent faster than the 3090 Ti in raster performance. So raster performance around 60% faster. It's quite difficult to know because NVIDIA's own benchmarks and all of that stuff, like we've discussed them quite at length. My personal, my personal opinion with the next generation cards is that you know you wait for the reviews. That's my personal, that's my personal opinion. Um, if I had to be like really, really, really honest with you guys, I would probably, unless I had like a really bad GPU or something like that, like you know if my GPU was about to explode, um, you know like. Or I was like using a GPU for work purposes or what have you, or I really needed NVIDIA features for whatever reason, I would probably wait for AMD to show their products because at the very, very, very least, at that point, you'll know A, whether there's any production issues with RTX 40. I haven't heard there are, but you never know. B, if there are any software problems. C, hopefully at that point, you know, supply chains and stuff will start to smooth out. Don't blame me, by the way, if they suddenly become like completely out of stock. And the big one is that you actually have a comparison against AMD. Now, I don't think NVIDIA are going to reduce the price of RTX 4090 by the time AMD show their cards like I would love to, but I don't think it's very probable. But hey, at the very least, you'll get an idea. That's my personal opinion. At the end of the day, I say the same thing about the CPUs as well. Like, I don't advocate you guys buy um, Ryzen... 7000 right now, I'd at the very least wait until the 13th generation of parts, sorry, 13th generation of CPUs gets released. But again, that's just my opinion. That said, thank you very much for checking out this video. If you've enjoyed it, then you know what to do. It's YouTube, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.